family, this is uh, session three, Observing and Studying Learning Ecosystem. The first speaker is uh, Oscar Meaia with uh, a paper entitled People-Centered Benchmarking of Smart School Ecosystems, a study with young students from Aveiro region. Thank you, Oscar. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I'll try and share my screen, see if you can get it. Okay, are you getting my screen? Are you able of seeing my, my desktop? Yes. Yes, okay. Um, okay, so let's... Uh, what, we, what I'll be showing you today augments on uh, previous work. So um, we'll try to share with you what we call our uh, benchmarking process, uh, supported by the Asler, the smart school questionnaires, okay? Um, it has several authors, um, uh, Carlos Ferreira, Zen uh, Nunes and myself presenting, we are from University of Aveiro, Fernando Delgado is the director of one of the school clusters uh, where we tested this uh, benchmarking process. And João Ferreiro is from another school cluster at Stereja, he's a teacher there. Uh, so, um, this is a financially uh, financed uh, project of our Ministry of Education, and all the ethics also went through the Minister of Education. Uh, for us to develop this research inside these school clusters, okay? That's an international scientific network. So we started, this all started at Rome with Carlo, in fact, the, the first version. We localized the second version here in Portugal at Aveiro and Stereja schools. And it's already in Brazil also. Uh, so as I was mentioning, things started in Rome concerning this. Uh, Aveiro, this is just a, a, an image of, of Goiânia, the capital of the state of Goiás, where, we also, where the study is also taking place. The host there is the Media Lab of the Univer Federal University of Goiás. This is just a big view of our university campus here at Aveiro, the central part. Um, this is the front image of one of the school clusters, yeah, Aveiro. This is really an, an old building, but it was refurbished, of course, recently. Uh, this is the other, uh, São Bernardo School, that belongs to this cluster, but it's in a completely different place, okay? So it belongs to the same cluster, but we're speaking of a completely different neighborhood of this one here. And then in a different city, we have, uh, belonging to the Aveiro region, we have Stereja. This is a very nice, it's a, a recent school, as you can imagine by the architecture, this big plane. And so, this all starts, of course, very human-centric, uh, and we go back to very, very uh, historical theories of, me, of um, Maslow's motivational theory, and uh, a little recent is Mihaly's, Chicks and Mihaly's uh, optimal experience that's um, better known as the flow or theory of flow. Uh, we go back to that. Uh, and that's part of the project, although today with the benchmarking process, we will concentrate on what we can get out of the Oslo smart, uh, um, smart School questionnaires. Uh, of course, when we mention this is citizen-centered, we can relate this uh, with um, the recent philosophy of individualism or the, the movements of individualism. Uh, do not mistake this with egoisms or other kind of things. This is one of the uh, uh, theoretical and philosophical uh, movements coming out of the postmodern uh, philosophies. We are just going to concentrate on one of the stakeholders that are contemplated in the Asler um, questionnaires, okay? Although we, the, the questionnaires consider five stakeholders, we are only going to here use one of them, the, the students, the younger students uh, questionnaire. Uh, it's made up of closed and open questions. Um, the closed questions, we mainly going to show that are extremely important to valorize opinion because open questions will be extremely important for other issues, the, the results that we take out of the qualitative questions, okay? 
So we might consider that valorizing opinion will take us to a first holistic diagnosis, the closed questions. Um, going further with this, which we will not bring in today, is of course particip participatory design processes and so on to really get the results of this kind of questionnaire to do things inside schools, okay? Um, these questionnaires specifically were hosted by the citizenship classes in each one of these schools, okay? Each one of these partners. Uh, when I was mentioning a while ago individualism, one of the front ends of postmodern uh, philosophy, this here is just a, a picture of Gilles Lipovetsky, which is a French philosopher that has been reasoning a lot and developing this component of individualism that really considers, in his words, of course, that um, this particular singularity of the individual that is coming up, especially with the technology mediated solutions to really bring in the best of our singularities for the common well-being is something that's worthwhile looking at and considering, okay? So no confusion here with egoisms and so on in what we are trying to deal with. Um, so as I was mentioning, the initial phases started at, uh, and still going on, of course, uh, Carlos still has this work going on at the school clusters in Rome. Um, and uh, the first thing we had to do is go for the ethics authorization at the Ministry of Education here in Portugal, plan the participatory process with the three schools and set up the questionnaire in the life system, which is hosted at University of Tor Vergat at Rome. So University of Rome Dua. Um, the localization included the double check of the Asler Smart School questionnaires with stakeholders, teachers, parents, and some students, okay? So this is always a per permanent check if the question's okay for consistency and so on. In fact, this work will prove that we can still uh, improve the questionnaires considering consistency, okay? So uh, it's a three-phase process that I'm bringing to you today. It starts, of course, with the descriptive statistics. It's uh, supported, uh, the questionnaires are supported by 10-point ordinal Likert scales in the closed questions. And considering this kind of questionnaire, the most appropriate um, characteristics of the uh, descriptive statistics are the medium, the first quartile, and the third quartile instead of using standard deviation, okay? Um, the next phase, we're going to deeper statistical probing, probing, considering one again, once again, it's a, it's an ordinal Likert scale uh, from one to 10. We use non-parametric statistical functions to help us out here. And what mainly uh, this deeper statistical probe, uh, probing will do is help us understand how we can improve and take out the most of qualitative data, okay? obtained, of course, from the open-ended question, open-ended questions and comments that in uh, many situations are related with the inquiry dimensions I will be sharing with you, okay? So it's basically this three-phase process. The data collected for us to test this process was collected in June 2018 in three schools, José Estevam, coded here as JE, uh, J São Bernardo, SB, and Estereja with EST school. Uh, 156 students, seventh to ninth grade students, so 12 to 14 year olds. Uh, you also have the female and male uh, populations here for each one of these cohorts. Uh, the José Estevam school has almost 3,000 students, so we got from these younger students a, a sample of 156 participants. In San Bernardo, which is a smaller school belonging here to the Aveiro city, we got 60 of these participants. And in Stareja, it's a bigger, store, a, a bigger school, and it's very central in the city of Stareja, we got 81 participants, okay? Uh, these, the, the inquiry dimensions for, um, for these younger students, really they are eight dimensions. And considering time and space for the paper, and also what we want here is to use these cohorts to really test the process, uh, we just used five dimensions. And you know, you'll understand on the way uh, why. Uh, some are related to this first uh, dimension, considering food, uh, you just have one closed question and an open question. Security, you'll have two questions on internal security and external security and safety inside school. 
And then when we go to people in space, it's an 11 closed question dimension with five open questions. So this 11 closed question also, um, we had to look at this with some, with some um, different perspective and I'll share with you uh, just a later on. Then socialization dimension, we looked at sociability and of course interaction with family. Once again, socio sociability didn't have open questions, it just has closed questions. And here we also use the specific statistical functions to understand consistency and what was going on here. Interaction with family was a little bit similar to the first one in terms of the processing of the information, but with different aspects. Really, the, this last one is very straightforward considering the behavior and opinion of the three cohorts, okay? Uh, so looking the, sorry, the, the first thing that's very important here, we used polygon uh, diagrams, so uh, radar graphs with the 21 questions for all the dimensions. You can see down here the one, two, three, four, five dimensions we used uh, to test this process. Uh, the food service is in the first axis of this um, of this diagram, of this radar diagram, and then all the other axes coding the other dimensions. Uh, question two and three, uh, sorry, jumping around. The question two and three, the second and third axis concerning security and so on, okay? Then we have like an 11 question dimension considering people in space and blue for José Estevão School, green for São Bernard School, and purple for Stereja School. The, this is the coding scheme we'll use in all the paper and presentation. A better view of this, we'll try and overlay the three colors, okay? Uh, you can see the medium going on here, and here it starts to be rather clear. Um, at least it's uh, also a qualitative representation here, We're using coded color. So we understand the behavior of the, the opinions in the three schools. Uh, this is also a holistic, so a proposal of a holistic visualization of how the three cohorts are performing, okay, of these seventh to ninth grade students. Uh, we'll go, go back to this uh, whenever it's appropriate. So the first thing we did in the, in the food services is use the Man Whitney uh, U test uh, to understand different opinions in me male and female population um, of the three schools. Um, and here we understood they don't have different opinions, okay? And this will give us more or less work when we're looking at the qualitative opinions to understand if we need to slice this up in these two gender uh, issues. So it seems that there's no difference, so we don't have to worry with that in the qualitative analysis. Um, the same goes to the Cruz Colley Wallace test on independent samples here. Uh, sorry. Uh, um, here in the Cruz Colley Wallace test, uh, the idea is to try and understand if the um, graduate, if the students' population, the seventh, eighth, and ninth grade students' population, had any differences amongst them. Okay. And here, once again, um, there seems to be no difference of opinion considering food services here, okay? Even so, a pairwise comparison was done here. And uh, between the three cohorts, okay, now we are testing the three cohorts, and we understand that there is a difference considering San Bernard School. And what I can tell you is San Bernard School of these three is the only that has catering. It doesn't have, uh, they have a canteen, of course, but the, uh, the meals are not cooked at school. There's a catering service that takes the meals there, okay? This is an important information because then uh, we notice this green medium is lower than the others and the rest also. So the first quartile and the second and the third quartile are really lower. So the whole sample here is lower considering food service. And when we go into students' comments, it's the school they, where they are completely compiled to mention something about food. It's, of all the comments we received here, 93, uh, the students, they seemed compelled, 93.3% of the comments uh, we got in from, from these students, 56 students 
thought they should say something. And well, as you can imagine, imagine this something wasn't uh, very good. Actually, you notice by the qualitative uh, analysis we did there, clustering on good quality and more. Uh, some students uh, mentioned also they would need more equipment in their canteens, a little bit more tables and so on. But when it comes to food quality, raw and cold food and so on, um, once again, I have to remind you that this school has a catering service. They don't have their, um, their the, the food is not cooked um, locally at, at their school. Okay, going on. Um, so uh, concerning security, we have two questions, two closed questions. So the first thing Spearman's uh, uh, correlation here could be useful was to uh, try and see what kind of correlation. And what we understood here is both, both questions correlate positively um, uh, very well. Of course, in some schools correlating more than in others. Okay, and uh, while so the Wilcoxon matched sample test to detect median differences. And here we did find um, there was uh, some differences, uh, of course, between these, these schools, okay? Uh, in José Estevão, for example, students have a greater sense of security within school. Um, still considering school, uh, they found no difference with the man whitney test between gender in these uh, opinions of the three schools. And uh, also considering the Chris Colley Wallis test uh, on independence, uh, we found different opinion patterns of, of the eighth grade students. Normally we use this test to understand differences in the seventh, eighth or ninth grade, okay? Um, a pairwise comparison of the eighth grade students with the seventh grade, the ninth grade, and um, we understood that these eighth grade students have, have at José Estevão, JE school, they had the lowest perception of security outside school. This also gives us some clues to when we're looking at qualitative, qualitative data, what we should try and look for, okay, to understand in their opinions what might be going wrong. Um, going on, so here, these are the two questions here in the uh, radar. And once again, the green line of San Bernardo is a little lower and all the, the sample, especially in the first question, which is inside security, is also lower than the other two schools here considering, considering security, okay? And here, of course, some of the qualitative uh, comparison of the three schools, blue schools, Estevão, the green one, San Bernardo, and Stereja, and you can notice, you don't even need to look at the semantic meanings of that, the meanings of everything that's behind here, uh, but the, the green, the green um, opinions are really uh, coming out here, considering San Bernardo uh, School. Um, people in space, which is the 11 closed question, um, 11 closed question um, dimension, we used Spearman's uh, correlation. And here we started getting something that is related with consistency. We got strong positive and also strong negative correlations in these 11 questions. In fact, here we use the dendrogram, the hierarchical words dendrogram representation, and we understood there are two groups of questions that are formed here. Questions nine and 10 tend to group. And we uh, then understood looking at those questions, we understood why. In fact, one of these questions was even, um, wasn't very well perceived what we wanted the students to uh, understand of it. it, had to do with conversation, discussion uh, with their colleagues and they understood discussion in a, certain, in a different sense. Uh, so here there's something, some issues that we can uh, really improve in the questionnaire, considering consistency, but also considering content, the way the question was formulated, one of the questions. Um, this is the paper, we, we have all this, I'm not going to go through all of this, but here people in space had five open questions and um, it's also a dimension that really contributed to understand what is the school that is performing better in terms of smartness. So the perception of uh, how the students relate or feel related with the school uh, we start to understand that José Estevão is clearly is clearly the school where students where students are feeling are feeling much uh, much closer 
much uh, sense of belonging, it's much better. Um, in sociability with the six closed questions, uh, correlations were positive. So these six questions seem to really be very consistent and asking sim uh, similar things considering the, um, the dimension. In fact, you can identify two groups, one related with rules, responsibility, and the other group of questions related with relationships, okay, the more social dimension here in sociability, which is as we expect. Uh, interaction with family, the last question, very similar to the first one in terms of structure, and here things were very straightforward. We just detected here in the seventh grade student of Zestevo, scoring higher than the rest of the population, okay, and um, and this this was detected in the Kruskal Wallis test when we compared between the in this uh, cohort the, the seventh, eighth, and ninth grade students, and then in the San Bernard School with the Man uh, Whitney U test and Kruskali test, we we just confirm an overall similar opinion of all the population, and in the Treasure School also. Okay, uh, so this was this last two question here considering interaction with family. It's amazing because these kids, if you look at this last line, they just don't want family in school. Uh, of course, there are others that propose other things, but what really comes out as the most amount of comments, almost in all the three cohorts, uh, exactly in, um, in the uh, San Bernardo school, curiously, which uh, you have students saying they would like to have some activities, but you have more or less the same amount of students saying, no, no parents at school. Uh, it's amazing to understand this and of course other things in their opinions inside the open ended questions. So conclusions. Uh, we do believe that uh, descriptive statistics and this holistic visual representation really helps us in the first hand using medium first and third quartile to understand what's going on in the different cohorts as a start and of course uh, while applying the non parametric testing functions we, we shared with you. It's a really a deeper probing uh, process that can really uh, produce guidance, as we mentioned here, in detailing the inspection of qualitative data. Okay. Uh, besides this, of course, uh, the dendrogram hierarchy helped us to test the consistency of the smartness questionnaires, not only on structure, but also on content. And we actually detected some issues that we can improve here, considering structure, but also considering content of one of the questions that was very, very scored in a very low sense because students perceived in the wrong way what we wanted. We wanted to understand conversational intent and uh, we use the term discussion and they really think discussion would mean losing friends and so on. So they, they got it wrong. We'll have to really um, look at that, that question again. So thank you very much to Carlo, of course, that started this at Rome. Uh, and for, for sharing his expertise and experience and follow up with what's going on here in Portugal and in, in Brazil at a certain point. And then a special acknowledgement to everyone at these school clusters, students, parents, teachers. A very special thanks to Claudia Rams that helped us with the quality of data processing and Vincenzo Bar Baraniello, hope you got your name. I don't know if it's Vincenzo is online, if you're there Vincenzo. A great hope for you too. He prepared us the data sets from Life Platform at Tor Vergata to get these, uh, this data here for you. So to you all, thank you very much and thank you for listening. So this is just one of our pictures at home in the South, one of our considered, I think, one of Europe's best beaches last year or two years ago. Thank you very much. So thank you very much, Oscar. I think we are running a bit behind schedule, so I would uh, like to ask to be available until the end. So for further questions, we may okay. eventually have uh, two or three speakers at the end and save yes. some time. And I'll be around anyway. If anyone needs a question, I'll be around. Sorry, sorry for this. I know, Oscar, thank you. And uh, the next speaker,